Hey YouTube, on site here. We're gonna take out this co-dominant pine tree. People are always asking, how do you get your rope in there? Uh, most of the time we just climb up there with spurs and set our rigging so that we can get it exactly how we want it and our climb line. There's no magic to it. There's the occasional shoot into a tree for SRT or for the Raptor so that you don't have to negotiate big trunk. Pruning, of course, you, you're not gonna spur up the tree, so you go up the rope and so you set a line. But most of the time we, on removals, we just spur up the tree unless it's really big. And then we'll skip the big portion of the trunk by using a line launcher and shoot that into the tree and then go up the rope or throwing the line or whatever. But most of the time, this is it. Climb the tree with spurs, set your rigging line, set your climb line, make your cuts come down with flip line on spurs no tie in when you're just on the spar you got your climb line under your flip line so that you're tied in double and that's like standard i get this question a lot and the answer is so simple that i often don't answer it i think if you're asking that then you need to do a little more homework yourself rather than looking for that answer but that might be the wrong approach so there it is we climb it with spurs and set our lines most of the time so here's the tree i'll climb this up up this tree with spurs I'm one of those guys that ties in twice, even when I'm down low like this. I'll cut off the lower stuff on the way up. I'll go up the left side, cutting off all the brush because the drop zone is really good here. I had a video a while back where I one of these split out and made a real thin spot. The video is called Some Say Brave, I think. It's a longer title, but that'll get you there. Anyway. People ask me, what's a codom? Well, a codom is, it's a tree that is generally a single leader. Like this is a leader and it has branches coming off of it. Well, it's kind of a freak. Logger would call it a school marm. And a codom is where you get like this conjoined twins and it's really weak right in there. That's called a bark inclusion. And the trees are growing in diameter independently of each other. So this one puts on a new growth ring every year. This one puts a new growth ring every year. And so they just press away from each other until one side splits out. And in this case, it would be the more leany side right over the garage. So that's what a codom is that's what a codominant is okay youtube i'm gonna cut into this i'm gonna cross section it for sure it'll come into two pieces and i'll show you that there's bark inside between the two because it's two trunks that got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and they're pressing against each other with believe it or not bark is now like a foreign body that separates um it kind of interrupts a graft so it's not grafted it's a dotted line to break on is what it is, like an orange. I'll show you. So here's the first one. See, this is bark. Every year, this would be pressing away further and further until one side lets go. So if you're a homeowner looking at this and you have conifer trees, pine trees, fir trees, stuff like that, and you see this real tight union where it splits into two, you need to look at what's under both sides of that because someday it'll be on the ground or on whatever's under it. Peace coming down. All these people that say stuff like this that falls on a house is an act of God. Not exactly because you can predict this. This is a uh, preemptive preventive maintenance I guess this would have peeled off one day and a little bit of effort ahead of time by us by them spending money saves this prophecy from coming true because it would have and then I'll set a lowering line and my climb line in the left side and then I'll drop down a bit and start stripping up the tree on the other side, the other codom. And we'll probably lower a top out because of this building, but I think I'll be able to free fall all the limbs and stuff right in here for that side. Was I 
Was I succinct enough? Did I, I say liked it? it. Did I say it all? I was kind of focused on this a little bit, but I'm pretty sure you got it all. Oh yeah, the hitch climber. This is what August is climbing on today. Yeah, because I left my zigzag at home and my rope. This is that it's Neo actually, Pro. This is actually a 16 strand rope. I like this stuff. It's called Neo Pro. And hitch climber. What's this not? Machokin. Machokin. Mm-hmm. When I was in high school, I went to with to school with a kid or named Macho Todd Machokin. Machokin? Yeah. Hey Todd, hope you're okay. It's been 30 something years. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been able to reach over and get those so far. But right now it's starting to be a stretch. And I don't want those limbs to fall and hang on the limbs from the other tree and then swing out onto the roof. <laughs> This one's kind of a pain. Headache. This right here, I call it a spike, but it would have been another co-dominant. It would have just tried to be a top. It's going straight up. And then I'm probably going to lower a top. And then I'm probably going to drop this top there where the chipper is. probably weighs, it's going to have some dynamics, it probably weighs 300 pounds.
Do you guys enjoy the ride? Since you can't go to the roller coaster park. I was gonna show you something. Some Speedline kit prototypes. Pretty soon, the uh, the Monkey Beaver Speedline kit, the one with the suitcase, the James Bond, is gonna be totally OG. <laughs> We're phasing it out. There's only like 30 left. So if you want to be in the OG uh, Speedline Club. You better get one there's only 30 left and we're not making that anymore we're, we've gone to this different style this is a prototype but the storage case is a magazine on your harness so that you don't have your slings tangling up on the limbs and stuff so you just grab them here and then they, they come out. So it's like a, we're gonna call it like a sling magazine, you know? Or maybe a sling quiver or something. But it comes apart here. And then your guys on the ground have to be careful how they, you know, they load them in real deliberately one at a time. Because the Speedline kit has always been all about um, saving little bits of time over and over and over and over and thus adding up to a pretty good chunk of time saved at the end of the day that's what it's always been about is shaving seconds off of the job so uh this is the the new design and we're gonna have a few options if, if like the kit will still come with mollies but we've gone to this real stiff webbing style here and um Joe makes these actually right in our office and uh, we're gonna have a few more options and it's not really a, the best time to talk about it because this is not a speed line job but we'll be talking about it more in the future there's like 30 of the original kits left if you want them and then watch uh, my channel for upcoming changes in the speed line kit innovations uh, some some will love it and some will be glad they're OG and probably the OG guys will be buying some of the the later improvements too because we'll all a cart everything and now I've said more than I want to and see you later.